3. The Microbiological Safety Cabinet and its use. Working with cell cultures generates aerosols that pose an unseen threat to the scientist and co-workers. To protect against these threats, microbiological safety cabinets are used. Turn the safety cabinet on 10 to 15 minutes before you start working to allow the airflow through the cabinet to stabilize. Ensure that the cabinet is clear of all unnecessary items, spray with 70% alcohol solution and allow to settle before starting work. Safety cabinets provide user protection by controlling the airflow into and throughout the cabinet. Air is drawn through the front opening where it is passed through a HEPA filter before being returned into the working area as a downflow of clean air protecting the worker from potential aerosols and the cell line from external contamination. The balancing of these airflows provides an air curtain at the front work area which provides protection to the operator and the cells. However, the air curtain is easily disturbed, therefore minimize disruptions by keeping the cabinet work area free of clutter. Only essential items should be placed in the cabinet. It is also advisable to have spare gloves, masks and other required items nearby the safety cabinet. A clinical waste bin and waste pipette container should be adjacent to the cabinet. After working in the cabinet, ensure that it is clean and free from all items that have been used in the procedure and ready for the next person to use. Once a week, clean cabinet thoroughly with an effective disinfectant solution remembering to remove the base plates and clean underneath. This should preferably be done at the end of the week, leaving ample time for cabinet to re-establish over the weekend. Observe these tips to work effectively with the safety cabinet. Keep cabinet clear of unwanted items. Work as near to center of cabinet as possible and at least 15 centimeters from front. Do not obstruct the air inlet grills. Keep sterile materials separate from infected materials. Avoid passing potentially infected material, such as an ungloved hand, over clean material. Aspirate liquids rather than pouring wherever practicable. Pouring can be acceptable when transferring larger volumes or when aliquoting reagents. On completion of work, Remove all of the cultures for incubation after spraying their containers with 70% alcohol solution. Leave cabinet on for 5 to 10 minutes before switching off. Alternatively, leave it running all of the time. Fumigation. Aerosols or spills produced during cell culture can result in contamination of inaccessible surfaces. In these cases, Decontamination can only be carried out by fumigation. This is a hazardous activity and should only be undertaken by fully trained technicians. Ensure that the facility and equipment are capable of being fumigated. Waste disposal. Tissue culture generates large amounts of waste material, such as culture flasks containing cells and media, used pipettes and other liquid waste. These should be considered as a biohazard and placed in labelled waste bags prior to destruction by autoclaving or incineration. Dispose of waste regularly and do not allow large amounts to build up. Keep a suitable container of strong disinfectant in or by the cabinet for used pipettes. Regularly empty and replenish this container. Waste liquid accumulated in the safety cabinet during routine culture can be a source of contaminants and should be disposed of after each session. A sharps disposal container should be used for waste such as broken glass and used needles. You must always dispose of biological waste safely in accordance with local legislation. Section